4-4 using CPCTC. Hey, what does that stand for? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So here's the process. <clears throat> this chapter we've been talking about parts of triangles, then about entire triangles, and then parts of triangles again. So here's the basic big idea. I've drawn two hands here, <clears throat> and it's as if we're saying, hey, if I have something about this finger that matches something on this finger, and I have something else on this finger that matches something on this finger, and a third thing over here, let's go pinky and uh, a square there. So I have three things, and three is the magic number. So as long as I can prove three of these parts match up with the same three parts on another um, figure, then I can assume, I can state that the entire figure is congruent. So I've got my first three parts. Square, cloud, star, match up with square, cloud, and star. So now my second step is this entire hand is congruent to this entire hand. And sure, they're mirror images of each other, but they have the same dimensions, same angles, same everything. Now, this is the third part, or the, th <laughs> the third section about the first part. Anyway, so now I have three other parts that I haven't used yet. They are here, matching up with this one, <clears throat> here, and here. And I know I'm going to stretch your imagination a little bit, but I'm also going to say this area in here. So those are three other parts that I knew nothing about when I started, but we're matching this up. This is a metaphor for triangles. <clears throat> I have three parts. I have six parts in a triangle. So if I can match up three between two triangles, then I can say the triangles are congruent. Then I can tell you about the last three parts of those triangles. And so if I've got this, then I can say that the triangles are congruent, then I can say that the remaining parts must also be congruent. So how does this work with triangles? <clears throat> if we've got a triangle here and another triangle here, if I can match up three parts, so one way to do it would be, oh, say side, angle, side. Those are three parts. Where are the three that I haven't touched yet? I've got an angle, another angle, and a side. So my first step was <clears throat> to use um, these three parts. Then I can state the triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Then I can state something about uh, the other three remaining sides. So here we go. They need you to explain how you can use these four things and CPCTC to prove that this statement is true. Well, let's look here. These are two triangles and the exciting thing here is that they share a side. As soon as you see two triangles sharing a side, you should say to yourself, S, S for side, because you know that BD must be congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. So I know I've got a side, and look at this. They also used hatch marks to show me something about another side, and here's the important thing. They also showed me a right angle here, which must mean that there's a right angle there. So if I tap these in the order that I can identify them as being congruent to the other thing, here are my three parts, a side, an angle, and a side. So this was the angle that was formed by these two sides, and it matches up to the other triangle. So first, <clears throat> I can say that these two triangles are congruent by SAS, and then I can tell you something about A, which I didn't know before, but because the entire triangle is congruent, now I've got CPCTC 
to tell you that uh, angle A is congruent to angle C. So what I all I really need to see here is something this simple. You're going to use SAS, then CPCTC. So you're going to write this a lot. Ooh, ooh, look, it's another two triangles that share a side. So let's start naming the things in a certain order. And here's what I mean by in order. Every time you're doing this in all the previous practices, uh, practice homework sections, you had to decide, is it SAS? Is it AAS? Is it ASA? Is it SSS? You had to pick from these. <clears throat> now, if you put your pen or pencil on one of these components that you know for sure lines up with something else in the other triangle. So right now I know this angle matches up with this. So that's one of these letters. Well, I've just circled some angles, so let me write down angle. Hey look, I get another angle that matches to another triangle's angle. So now I know I have two angles. Um, what's the other thing that I have? Oh, look at that reflexive property. I like to put little hatch marks here so that I notice it as <clears throat> a side that's congruent to another side. Now, I've circled those three things, but what order do I put these letters? Is it AAS or is it ASA? Hmm. Well, this is where your pencil comes in handy. Put your pencil down on the sort of the extreme one. So here's the first one. If you can point to each of the parts that you know are congruent without skipping an entire part, then you're going in the right order. Right now, if I point to this one and move from this angle, the very next thing that I come to that I know about is a side. And the very next thing I come to as I move all the way around the triangle is an angle that I know something about. So I went from an angle to a side to an angle, and those are the parts that I know. <clears throat> so number two would be ASA. So the missing part that we didn't know anything about was HE, and that now we can be sure is congruent to FG because we used these three parts to say ASA, and now the remaining statement is because CPCTC. Number three, how can we prove angle K is ang congruent to angle P? We don't know anything about them. Ugh, right you are. However, let's look for the three parts that we do know match up. Then we can use a three letter combo to say that the entire triangle is congruent to the other entire triangle. Then we can use our remaining parts. We can state something about the congruence of the remaining parts. So what three parts do match up? We have an angle matching up with an angle. We have the very next thing is a side right here. So this angle is, part of this angle is the next thing that we have. So we, have, we started with an angle, then we moved to a side. And look, all right angles are congruent. So we have ASA again. Now I can say something about the remaining parts. All they need to hear, oops. No, it's not highlighter. All they need to hear about is K and P, and so we can state that because of CP, oops, CPCTC. <clears throat> Number four, they're looking for information about Q, S, T, so this angle, and S, Q, R, this guy. But there are no tick marks, no labels, no nothing that says those are congruent. So we have to start somewhere else. What three parts do I have that I do know something about? Well, as always, we have a shared side. So this side is congruent to itself. I'm going to make little hatch marks there so I remember that this is the side that I'm looking for. Now, what order do you go in? This is probably the hardest part of knowing how to use these labels. Okay, we know that T matches up with R. We know that, let's see, if we move from here, I don't know anything about this side. I don't know anything about that angle. 
So let me go in the other direction. I don't know anything about this side, Ooh, but I come to another angle that I do know something about, which matches up to this guy. So now I've gone from an angle to an angle. Then let me keep going in that direction as I work my way around the triangle looking for congruent parts. And look, there it is. This side is congruent to itself, which matches up to this side. So I've gone from an angle to an angle to a side. And that is the reason why I can say that the entire triangle is congruent to this entire triangle. Now I can go back to some more parts. And the parts are congruent because of C, P, C, D, C. So now I can tell you for sure that this angle here is congruent to that angle there. Number five, we have one part, two parts, three parts. So that means I used three sides. Now I can say that the entire triangle is congruent to the other entire triangle. And that means now I can tell you something about the parts I knew nothing about as soon as I started. So U <coughs> congruent to W because of CPCTC. Now you have to do number six. What parts do you know for sure are congruent? Then decide what order they're going in. And this, the way to do this is to start on one of the things that you know and then move to the very next thing that you know something about. Write down those two letters. So if you started at an angle and you move to a side, you'll write A, then S. Then what's the last thing that you know for sure? On this diagram, as always, there's something that's not marked that you know for sure. So what is it? Number seven. Ah, I have a side that's shared. I have an angle and then another side. So let me, this one would be SAS. And now I can tell you something about FG congruent to DG because of CPCTC. <coughs> How about here? Oh, vertical angles. Look at that. Anytime you see these lines cross, you can be sure that the angles, the vertical angles here will be congruent. Isn't that handy? Because now I can start at this angle, move to the next thing that I know something about, another angle, move to the next thing that I know something about, a side. So now I have angle, angle, side. Then I can say something about JK to KL. Those are congruent. Why? Because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Number nine, look at that. This side is congruent to itself. So what three parts do I start off knowing something about? A side, a side, and a side. Mm -hmm. And now I can tell you something about the angles, which previously I knew nothing about. N is congruent to Q because of CPCTC. <clears throat> now this says write a plan for the proof. We're just going to write the proof. Two columns. Here are my statements. Here are my reasons. They're telling me that BD here is perpendicular to AB. Oh, so they marked me a right angle. Great. This is also perpendicular to DE, so they marked another right triangle, uh, right angle. Super. And they tell me that BC is congruent to CD. Got it. Now, with those markings already on there, I get to write everything that's here. And why do I get to write all of that as a statement? Because they gave it to me. So A, given. So now, what's the second statement that I can make? Hmm. I see here that I have an angle and a side that are congruent to an angle and a side, I should say something about this angle right here. And that angle right there. So now let me do that. Angle B, C, A is congruent to angle D, C, E. And why is that? Because they're vertical angles. So every time I make one of these statements, there's a reason why. 
Now, number three, I have set up an angle, a side, and an angle. Congruent to the other triangles, angle, side, and angle. So now I get to say that the entire triangle is congruent. A, B, C, congruent to triangle E, D, C. Because why? Because angle, side, angle. Now, that's n I'm not done. They wanted me to prove something about A congruent to E. How do I know that? Um, well, it's not given. That's actually the prove statement. So let me just write it the way they wrote it. A congruent to angle E. But the reason isn't because it's given. It's because I have two congruent triangles and the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And A corresponds to E. Number 11. <clears throat> We've got everything that's given here is what's marked here. So let me write that again. Segment FJ congruent to segment GH. Angle JFH is congruent to angle GHF. Now, why can I say that? Because it's given. They told me that up front. I didn't need to do anything, any logical reasoning here. Well, so far I have a side and I have an angle. What's the other thing that we've seen so much of up here that we know is congruent? That's right. FH is con congruent to FH. And why can I say that? Reflexive property. <clears throat> now then, I have a side, an angle, and a side that I have established are congruent to the side, angle, and side in another triangle. What am I going to say now? The entire thing. J, F, H, congruent to triangle G, H, F. Why can I say that? <laughs> hey! I get my three parts, a side, an angle, and a side, in that order. But that's not what they wanted me to prove. They wanted me to prove that FG <coughs> is congruent to JH. Well, if I have two congruent triangles, that means that FG would be congruent to JH, because those are the corresponding parts of congruent triangles that are congruent.